Well, welcome to this uh, tutorial, which is going to be the first of a series which are going to reconstruct something that looks a bit like uh, this scene here. And this is a shot taken from the gallery for the Brazil renderer again. And I will put some acknowledgements of where this image comes from into the project file. So this first part is going to cover modeling that uh, packet of pills that uh, we saw there. And the first thing I'd like to do is to just show how you can set up some reference images in Houdini. Uh, and we saw a bit of this in the modeling of the glass uh, for the last tutorial, but uh, this time we're going to have a look at how to set up multiple views to guide modeling. Well, let's see how to go about doing that. I happen to have a top view and a side view reference images. So I want to split my view into two here, like so. And the two menus here, we can see this one is a blue color and this one is a yellow color. And this means that this viewport is the active viewport and this one is the inactive viewport. Uh, and you can swap between the two, not by clicking on them, that doesn't work. You can see here that uh, even if I pan this other view, it doesn't become the active view from the point of view of display options. To make it the active view, we need to use uh, a hotkey and we need to be in camera mode. And there is a menu option if we right click, select viewport. Now this is a bit uh, irregular, it doesn't always work. Let's see whether it's going to work now, it hasn't. But we can see that there's a hotkey associated with it which is N. And if I hit N, we can see that this becomes the selected viewport. Hit N again, and it becomes, I'm clicking, select N, click, N, and the, we change the two. So let's move over to this viewport. Select display options, uh, background, and we want to find some Ima an image source and I've got here a top view so let's accept that and we want to make sure that apply operation to all split views is off uh, because we want to just work on this view here so if we enable display background images we can see that that appears but there are a couple of problems with the default options one of which is that if we zoom we can see that our image stays in it stays at the same size and that's going to be uh, a problem if we are trying to model with it as a reference image. And we can fix that here in the 3D viewport. Uh, if we, if we can see that we've got apply zoom to background enabled, uh, but it doesn't uh, seem to be working. And the reason for that is that we've got automatically place image enabled. So I need to turn that off. And now I can place my image uh, using these controls here. I can scale it. I can position it like so and what's more it will correctly move with the view. So that's that one. Let me now make this the active viewport. So click, make sure we're in camera mode, hit N and we can see that the display background images goes off because we haven't got anything here. And let's uh, find the side view and display the background image. And we can see that, uh, in fact, I've already placed this and it's remembered the, the placing. I had to move it. Now, you need to get these images so they're lined up so that they're more or less uh, the right size. And we can see that the length of this is pretty much four grid spaces. And the length of this, just have a look, is about three and a bit, it's a bit hard to see. So we're probably going to need to enlarge this just a bit. Uh, in fact, it's not gonna matter too much in this case because all we're gonna need to take from this side view is the height. But you can, by playing apart with these controls, match up your images if they're not exactly placed. Now, a couple of subtleties that I want to just point out. You'll notice that after this name here, there's a letter one, so this is top one. 
and this I've in fact set the view so this was our right view and it's got a 2 after it if I then set the view to for example the top uh, we can see that it's got a 2 after it and although it's a top view we're not seeing the background image here for the top we're seeing the same background image uh, as we had before and that's because the background image is allocated on the basis of which viewport we're looking at so in this case this is viewport 1 and this is viewport 2 uh, notice also that you can't uh, choose by moving back to a single view uh, if I do that we can see that I'm getting the, the number 2 viewport automatically even though earlier on it was this viewport here that was selected if I go back to a single view we're getting this one on the right uh, the way around that is to make sure this is the active viewpoint and then hit the hit viewport and hit the B key and that will bring up uh, this on a larger size and we hit the B key again it goes back to the two views Whoops. hit N and B well I want to have a little bit more detail on my grid here because I I want perhaps to have about maybe 3x3 three three or 4x4 four four grid squares covering roughly this area of the uh, of the pill. So if I bring up my display options, we can see that on the grid tab here, uh, there's an option for the ortho viewpoint, which is what we're in, obviously. Uh, and I can switch on and off the display of the grid. So notice, uh, by the way, that this is therefore different from the construction plane. Any settings that you set for the construction plane here won't apply in an orthographic view. What applies in the orthographic view are these display options here. So maybe let's try this at point 0.1 and point 0.1. And that's probably fine. OK, let's leave that like that. And obviously I, what I could have done is enlarged my photograph but this is a bit easier. So the first thing I'm going to do is draw a curve which roughly uh, maps out one part of this. And I'm going to switch on grid snapping. So let's just move up here and I'm marking out every single one of these points so I'm clicking on every single one like so and then if I want to close the curve I right click and click close curve and then I can stop building the curve so let's adjust this so it fits a bit more closely with the image and I also want to have a clearer view so I'm going to hit the W key to move into wireframe mode and let me hit S and 3 to select edges and select this first edge here and then F, F, F uh, to move that forward to select the whole of this top row uh, and then I'm going to move hit T to move into translate and we can see that we get an edit sop. Now in fact I'm going to uh, use in this case the num numerical positioners here and the reason I want to do that is because I want to try and keep it in more or less even numbers uh, because later on when we come to position the multiple parts of this it'll be easier if and this is the X direction it'll be easier if we are working on more or less even numbers so that's position that a little bit better and the next thing we need uh, is clearly a circle to represent this part here so what I'm going to do in fact is change this setting here next to the help symbol and this allows you to determine where these shelf tools do their work and I'm going to move it to create in context for the moment which means it's going to leave it inside the same geometry object that we have our other things in and let's just lay down a circle and we can't see anything because our circle is not on the XY plane or rather the XZ plane if I now change it, it is clearly it's far too large so let's 
uh, change its radius down. Let me just use this so that it's more or less the right size. And then I'm going to move it like so. Move the radius out a little bit, maybe to about there. Now, at the moment, it's a primitive, and this is a polygonal model, so I'm going to need to change it to polygons. And the other thing I need to do is try and make sure it has the nice same number of points as the points in this square. So let me have a look at the square. If I middle click here, we can see that's got 20 points. So let me give this 20 points. And then let's merge the two together. Like so. So I now have my two bits of geometry. And I've got to create some uh, joins between these two to make a, a single piece. So the tool I'm going to use to do this is called a polyknit tool. So let's zoom in a little bit. And you can see I've enabled the display of points so that we can see things slightly more clearly. So let me use the polyknit tool here on the polygon tab. And what this allows you to do is to knit together polygons by specifying uh, the points sequentially. So we could start here, we could move over here, we could move to this one, this one, this one, this one, and so on. Now, in fact, you don't have to specify every single point. It's clever enough to work out what to do with the points that you skip. So in this case, let's skip one, two points, go to the third, join it up to this one, then skip one, two, three, four, join it to the fifth one, here, one, two, three, four, five, this one, and then back to the beginning and finish knitting. And we can see that that's put together a reasonably nice piece of geometry. Now it would be even nicer if this was rotated a little bit. And unfortunately I made a mistake earlier by transforming my circle uh, using these controls here. So let me just put in a transform node and let's just put the display on that. Let's revert this back to its original position and let's now move it using the transform SOP like so and now we can go back to our polynet and we can so I seem to have got two transforms in there uh, we can now rotate this to sort out a little bit of that geometry, make it a little bit better. So let's move out of wireframe view by moving over here and hitting the W key. And we can see this is all shaded in. And the reason for that is that we've got several different bits of geometry here. And we can see that more clearly if we raise our circle a little bit off the floor and then over here I'm going to hit space and one to move into a perspective view D to bring up the display options uh, get rid of display background images and then let's zoom in and we can see that we've got our original square our circle and then this polynet that we just created and I just want to uh, select the let me get back to here I just wanted to select the square and the circle and delete them. So let's select that, delete, and then select this. That went wrong. Let's try again. Let's select this geometry here. And let's do it using normals that may make it a little bit easier. So let's select that. That's selected the top circle. Delete it. There we go. And then let's select the bottom and delete that. And then I can move my circle 
back to the ground plane. And that's given us uh, our geometry. Let me just stick in a reverse node. Like so. And then our geometry has the normals pointing in the right direction. Let me switch off the display of normals. And I want to poly, ex poly extrude this central part. And I want to make sure it's the right height. So I'm going to hit space and B to move back to our double view. And then let's zoom in, S and 3, select an edge, L to loop, and then use poly extrude. And I want to lift it up so that it's the same height as the display here, the, the, the background geometry here. So that's about right. So let me go back to space B to move back to a single view. And I could, I need to put a top on this. Uh, and the reason I haven't used the circle uh, is the same reason, and let me just demonstrate it, uh, that let's just uh, select an edge here. And uh, let's just select this edge. Let's just select this edge here. And loop. And I could now use polycap to cap this. And the reason I'm not going to do that, and the reason I didn't use the circle, is when we come to subdivide, we can see that this creates these very poor patterns. It, it's going to create a pattern which will show up in the render because it's a single polygon. It's not divided into quads or triangles. So unfortunately, there's no easy way uh, that I've discovered at least to create a cap which is uh, good for subdivision. But one method is to use poly extrude again to zoom this right in more or less to the center. Use average positions to keep the points together. With that selected, hit 2 to turn that into a point selection. Then lay down a fuse node and use the snap option to snap to the average value. And then let's just increase this until it snaps to a single point. Now this hasn't actually reduced the point count. We've still got 80 points, so we need a second fuse to convert this into a genuinely fused point. You see those all have been merged now. We're down to 60 points. And the other thing I'm going to do, because even this doesn't subdivide particularly well, and let's just add a subdivision node there. Even this doesn't subdivide this particularly well. Uh, but it does allow us, because we've used this poly extrude here, to insert some edge loops. And we can do that by increasing the number of divisions, like so. And now we can see that this is much more uh, like it should be. Except that here I've introduced some problems uh, with the fuse. So let's go back to this poly extrude, have a look at this, and then have a look at the fuse. And we can see it's it's sucked in some of those other points. So I need to reduce this down, say, to 0.05. Uh, and of course, what's actually happened is that I'm not no longer selecting the right points for that fuse. Uh, let me demonstrate something that we can do here to correct that. Uh, I can reselect the points that I want to use. And I can do that by moving my cursor into the 3D view, hitting enter, and then hitting the back tick key. And we can see that that's disconnected the fuse and reproduced the selection set of points. So if I now select these points here, in fact, let me just select no points and then select these points here, that allows me to reselect the points for that fuse, hit enter, 
and we can now see that that has created the single point again and we can go back and we can fuse and then the subdivide works much more like it should. By the way, another way to access that ability to reselect is to select the node that you want to work on and, and then you can use uh, this option here, right clicking on the select button, reselect for current tool, and you can see the shortcut there is the back tick key. So let me disable this subdivide node, and I want to introduce some poly beveling here. So uh, let me go back to my fuse node, and I want to select some edges here, select, and then three for an edge, and we can see it's not selecting this edge. And the reason for that is, in fact, because I've accidentally hit uh, the B key, which has changed the selection mode. And we can see this up here by right-clicking on our geometry type. We can see we've got edges selected. But if we look down here, we've got these options to select different types of edge, depending on whether they're facing the camera or not. And at the moment, we've got select back facing only. Uh, and that's because I hit the B key, which has toggled between these. So I need select front and back facing. So that's now kind of work. Loop round, shift select the one at the bottom, L to loop round, and then lay down a poly bevel. And this has created some bevels, but I'm going to use absolute, and I'm going to use a pretty small value point, 0, 1. That should work well. And then if we move back to our subdivide node, that's looking pretty good. So let's extend this out uh, now to include the other pills. And I'm going to do this by duplicating this first pill. Uh, but let's get this the right way around. We need this to be more or less even on both sides. So let me just edit it and I'm going to move into wireframe view and I'm going to select this side edge here and I'm going to use an edit sop to bring it in until it's more or less in the same relative position as this far edge and in fact just to make this easier I'm going to use this to do it using a precise numerical value. Uh, that's about right. Now, I then need to move this whole thing off, the whole object off. So let me just lay down a, another transform. And this is going to work on everything. And seems to have got trapped just selecting so let's just s hit end select nothing and then transform that's better and then we can move this off uh, and what I need to do is merge it back with the first geometry so let's lay down a merge so we're going to have the transformed version of this geometry and the original version before the edit and if I join these together like so we can see we have both sets of geometry and this is an important aspect of modeling in Houdini, which is in order to copy a bit of geometry like this, all I in fact need to do is split off the nodes to produce two separate paths and then merge them together again. And that's given us a duplicate of our geometry. And on the transform node here, let me just delete that. I should, because earlier on I used 
precise values, be able to just move this across until it perfectly fits there. And in fact, I can do more than that because I can lay down a copy SOP. And a copy SOP is different, has two different uses. You've probably seen it used extensively to instance geometry onto points. But we can also use it just to produce copies. So in this case, I'm going to produce three copies. And we can't see them at the moment because they're on top of each other. Uh, but we can use uh, this translate tool to translate each one of them, one after the other. And there we have it. So now we've got four identical pills. Well, the next thing I need to do is create the other half of this, this row of pills. And I'm going to do that using a mirror SOP. So let's lay that down, put the display flag on it. And at the moment it looks as if it's not doing anything. That's because I need to rotate about the z-axis here, or mirror about the z-axis. And we can see that that's now created the necessary geometry. Uh, and let's have a look and see what that looks like when subdivided. So let me put my display flag here. And we can see particularly if I go out of wireframe mode, we can see that we're getting this splitting here. And the reason is that when we created these copies, we didn't merge together or, or rather fuse the points at the edges. So they're still separate. So I need to have a fuse sob. And that gives us a smooth edge here. Well, let's have a look and see how that renders. And I've actually set up a render view here, and it's already rendered out. The only thing that we can see that's slightly looking slightly wrong is this uh, area here, where that edge is a little bit too sharp. And we could fix that by increasing the number of subdivisions here. Or, alternatively, we could get rid of the subdivide node completely. And instead, at the object uh, level here, on the MISC tab, sorry, on the Render tab, on the Geometry sub tab, Render Polygons as Subdivision. And we can see that that's producing the perfect uh, now set of pill cases. So that illustrates uh, a possible workflow, which is to start off by using a subdivide node to test the subdivision of your surface, but when you've more or less finished it, disable the subdivide node and enable subdivision here at render time. Uh, and this reduces the amount of geometry that Houdini has to handle because Mantra is going to do the business of subdividing. So a couple of extra things that I want to do with this, one of which is to create a little bit of an edge down the bottom here, because one of the things that's a giveaway for computer graphics is modeling a thin surface like this with absolutely no edge. And it's usually obvious when that's happened. So let me come here, select three, loop round, poly extrude, and let's just move this down just a little tiny bit like that. So that that'll be fine. Uh, and let's have a look and see how that renders. And we can now see that we've got a, just a little bit of an edge. It's catching the light. And that is enough to tell us that this is solid object. There's another thing uh, which shows this up as a computer-generated image. And that is that the geometry is absolutely regular. You can see every single bit of this is the same as every other bit. And that's a sign of a computer-generated image. And Houdini does have some tools which allow you to deal with this, too. Uh, one of them, of course, would be to add a displacement map to this geometry. Another is to use uh, a tool called Point Jitter. So let's just add a Point Jitter here. And 
and we can see it's completely wrecked our geometry and that's because the scale is far too high so I'm gonna change it so that it's not changing the Y position of our points at all and I'm gonna reduce the scale to something like 0.05 that's even that's too high 0.005 there that's a bit more like it let's have a look at how that looks like in the render view and although you can't see it there is just a little bit of variation now to this and we can see that the little bit of denting here and so on which which does give it a much more realistic feel particularly when it's been completely shaded and I'm going to refine that a little further by putting a poly bevel around it around that edge so select three and we can see unfortunately the existence of those edges that down the bottom has caused this to get confused as to where the edge loops are so I'm going to have to select this manually And I'm going to poly bevel this just to give it a very, very small bevel, which will mean that when it is rendered, we get a sharper edge. Well, the next thing I need to do is to create a little bit of geometry to hold the silver texture at the bottom. So let me select for, select this rotate it round, hit L, and hopefully that's selected an edge loop, it has, uh, and in fact I, I need to start in a different object, so let me just do that, create a new bit of geometry, like so, rename it bottom, dive inside, delete the file load, create an object merge, bring in our top plastic object, select for shift R to move that round, L to loop, delete key to delete, but delete non-selected, uh, select all, polycap and that's given us our piece of geometry of course it overlaps with the top piece of geometry so we're just going to need to move it down just a little tiny bit like so so it's just underneath and that's fine so that's our completed set of geometry. Now of course we can see this is rendering differently. The reason for that is that I haven't set this up as to render polygons as subdivision uh, and now that's looking fine. So that brings us to the end of this section of the tutorial about modeling the set of pills.